Here's an RCA CTC31 and this is a remote control model. I'm going to have to fix this knob that snapped off here. Here's the auxiliary control panel. This is real similar to one that I had when I was in high school. It's almost, or it is exactly the same except the one I had was a non-remote version. And it had a flyback fire. I left my bedroom and when I came back it was full of smoke. The flyback had caught on fire and, and melted everything in the HV cage. Luckily I, I wasn't away from it too long. But uh, that was, a, it was really bad what happened to that flyback. I still have the cabinet from that set in my parents' garage, but uh, these flybacks tend to not be the greatest. I'll take a look inside of the uh, set now and see what it looks like inside. Here's the inside of the CTC-31. Here's a remote receiver chassis. And down here are the motors on the tint and volume, or tint and color controls. It also has a motor on the volume control that really turns the control. It doesn't do it by steps. And let's see, here's the VHF tuning motor here. Here's a horizontal output cathode fuse I put in this several years ago. It's kind of a makeshift job. I think I'll order a new fuse holder. I'm going to try and get new caps for this, new electrolytics, replace all the electrolytics in this. Here's that infamous flyback. And on audiokarma.org, uh, one of the, the people there, Andy, was working on a CTC-31, and he found that this rubber material on the flyback was actually conductive. I got the ohm meter out, put it on the mega ohms range, and measured it and it was uh, found to be non-conductive on this one. Flyback looks like it dripped a little bit of wax, but not in too bad shape overall. I got this from a TV shop, and I probably haven't used it for uh, maybe four years. I'm going to try it out and just give a demonstration of how it's working. It was working well the last time I uh, used it, but I want to upgrade to new caps and a better fuse holder for increased uh, increased performance and safety. The front panel on the CTC31 removed so that you can get access to the channel indicator lamps. I removed the old busted off piece of the volume knob and I borrowed one off the Lyceum TV so I can work the volume control now. I'm going to put it back together and give it a test. I've now got the CTC-31 working. The color sink is not very good. Um, I think I'm going to need to get some new 6GH8 tubes. Let's try adjusting the tent here. So I like to give a disclaimer though, that if you hear some altered it's chords, some funny sounding chords, it's also that's about as much contrast as you can get. There may be some weak IF tubes, or maybe a weak video output. I just have to go through the tubes and check them out. But the CRT is really good shape. It's got got lots of brightness. Just could use a little bit more uh, video level. Let me turn it around here. Let's check the uh, tubes. Original CRT 22 UP22, and I, I really like the uh, gray glass faceplate on this. It doesn't exper uh, exhibit any of the discoloration you sometimes see on this age of tube. The volume's kind of weak. I'm not sure if this has a volume limiter control or not. It may just be a weak 6 AQ5 tube.
way this turns off, if you turn it off to the till you hear the first click, the remote receiver is still active, and there's a little green lamp in here I need to replace, which indicates remote receiver status. And you can do that with the remote control too. The volume will turn down. And if you turn it on, turn it till the set shuts off, but the green lamp is still on, that means the remote receiver is still active and ready to turn the set on with the remote. But if you want to turn all the power off, you just turn the volume all the way down until it goes all the way off. You can do that with the remote too. You just keep holding down the volume button. But then in that state, you can't turn the set back on with the remote. You have to uh, manually get it into the standby mode.